everybody to a bit of a different video. I am currently in the Oregon Coast Range in the Tillamook State Forest. We're actually going to be going on a quick overnight camping trip for today's video. I'm partnering with Anchor this week. I'm going to be stress testing the Anchor Solix 2000. I brought along with me quite a few extra luxuries to stay warm and to stay comfortable tonight. I'm really excited to get into it. This is gonna be such a different style from the norm for us, but I got a pretty late start to the day today. It's I think about 2.30 and uh, we're burning daylight. It's gonna be dark before I know it, so I'm gonna get unpacked and then kind of show you around the campsite with everything that I brought. So after a much longer time than I had anticipated, we are all set up here. It's a few minutes before 5 p.m. It's just starting to get dark right now. I've spent quite a bit of time over the past several years in the Tillamook State Forest camping during the winter, just because it's close to home and it's accessible. Um, but even though it's not, you know, super deep snow, negative 40, crazy kind of cold, uh, there's a really unique type of cold here. There's a level of just damp, wet humidity that just can't really be described. I've camped out in the desert during the winter into the teens and, you know, slowly getting into the single digits. And honestly, I would take that and I'm usually a little bit more comfortable in that dry cold compared to the wet cold of you know this more moderate rainforest type of setting. Giving a quick rundown breakdown of everything I brought with me, I actually brought an electric hot plate which should be a little bit better in some of the colder weather. You know my normal gas stove sometimes gets a little finicky when you get below freezing. It runs at about 1200 watts so plenty of headroom with the F2000. I actually brought an electric kettle as well. It's my little packed travel kettle. Uh, being able to have a proper pour over kettle while I'm camping and have the speed of the electric is going to be super satisfying and fun. I also brought a little portable electric heater for the tent. Uh, it should help keep things dry and get some of that humidity out of the tent. It should be a much more comfortable sleeping environment in this cold. Can't wait to test that out later tonight. It should be a little bit of a safer and better option compared to something like a Mr. Buddy heater inside of the tent where you can worry about carbon monoxide and things like that. My typical solo trips are a lot more pared down than this and I do a lot of backpacking, but in the winter I do like to bring some extra layers and warmth and fun stuff and just kind of set up a base camp. Or if I'm camping, you know, throughout the year with my wife, I'll bring some extra luxuries. And uh, with that spirit in mind, I did actually bring a full projector screen and uh, going to be hopefully watching some movies and TV shows tonight. I pulled out all the stops for the tent. I brought my big tent with me for a change. I've got a cot set up. I've got that electric heater. I've got some lighting set up. It's just going to be so nice and luxurious tonight. I'm really curious to see how far down I can drain that F2000 battery. I brought the extension as well. Uh, so it has a total of 4,096 watt hours which is gigantic and way more than you need for a single night. It'll still be a good test though to just use it as liberally as you want, you know, camping like Tom Haverford with all the luxuries and kind of see where we're at because a lot of people talk about the solar charging and that's good and all if you live in the right climate, but Oregon, even during the summer, a lot of places, it's dark, it's dim, it's gloomy, and you don't really get a lot of solar charge here in a lot of different areas that I tend to car camp in. Capacity becomes the name of the game, and I think I'm gonna be pretty well covered here. So with all that in mind, I'm set up, I'm way behind on my camp chores, I'm gonna get some food cooked, and then hopefully we're gonna get a fire going for the evening before it gets too much darker. Just a quick intermission from Studio Josh before we get back to camp and cook some dinner. I've had this thing for the past six months. It has been excellent. Wanted to give a quick rundown of some of the specs I probably didn't cover out at camp. The main F2000 unit has a 2048 watt hour capacity. I do also have the BP2000 extension battery here, which doubles that up to 4096 watt hours. This thing is an absolute beast in terms of capacity. It can handle sustained wattage of 24 400 watts with a 3600 watt surge so that is just about enough to run everything I brought to camp with me including the heater 
the kettle, the hot plate, the lighting. That's more bandwidth than most home circuits, at least here in the US. Being able to run a space heater and plug in other stuff on top of that is pretty crazy. To be able to take advantage of that high wattage, there's a pretty big variety of ports on the unit as well. You have 12 ports in total. You have four AC ports, three USB-C ports, two USB-A ports, two 12 volt aux car ports, and a TT30 port that you can actually use for RVs. So if you're not a tent camper like me, and if you still want to be able to camp in these you know, more remote dispersed areas without having electric hookups, or if you want to save some money when you're at a campground and not have to worry about paying for the electric hookups, being able to plug an entire RV into this for camping is pretty crazy. They also have solar panels available. I don't have them personally, but you can get a pretty good recharge on this in the right conditions as well. Aside from the tech specs, you also have a few things that really help with the portability. You probably saw in the clip of me unloading. You have some pretty chunky wheels here that are just a little bit under five inches in diameter. They have a little bit of luggy traction on here so it's really good for you know off-road type of things in grass or gravel uneven pavement things like that but you also have the easy tow handle on the opposite side here it uh, just pulls out like a little luggage handle and you can tow this thing around really easily it makes a huge difference being able to load it from you know my apartment to the car from my car to camp and load it back up and move it around camp as I need to that thing works perfectly and it comes in handy with having you know a larger capacity unit like this I've got a few other things to to cover later in the video, but I'm going to kick you back to Camping Josh and get some dinner cooked. Not the most wintry meal, but I've just been really craving burgers lately. It's around 40 degrees right now, so it's definitely getting colder as it gets darker out here. Um, so I'm gonna eat this and then uh, kind of figure out what's next, whether we wanna do a fire or if we wanna set something up with the projector. It is a rare occurrence that winter camping trips go as planned for me. It's been a little time since I finished dinner. When I was finishing up, a woman approached my camp. Apparently there are some missing dirt bike riders. I'm actually saying now it's a designated dispersed area. So a lot of people come and ride dirt bikes and four wheelers, things like that. They were missing. I ended up helping her out for a little bit and talking to her. The clouds started rolling in. Seems like the rain's gonna be starting pretty soon. So I ended up just retreating into the tent. I think I just got here a little bit too late in the day to be able to process firewood and get a fire going with the impending rain and I'm not about to be out in the rain when it's in the 30s. Pretty nice and cozy in here though. Like I said, I got a cot set up. I actually have a little heater going right here so it's slowly heating it up which is so nice because I think it's dipped down into the 30s at this point and it's just so wet and cold. Just finished brewing my tea in my heated tent. If this isn't luxury for winter camping, I don't know what is. Uh, it's getting pretty cozy and toasty in here. I just picked up this heater in preparation for this trip, so I wasn't really sure how it's gonna do. Tested it at home to make sure it worked, but so far so good. It's noticeably warmer in here. My hands were numb when I got into the tent and now they're toasty warm. Just hanging out, think I'm gonna read my Kindle for a bit or I might check out the projector and uh, watch a movie or something. This is shaping up to be the comfiest and coziest winter camping trip I have ever done. If you remember my first winter camping trip, I almost got hypothermia. I made a video about it. I think I called it like when frugal goes too far or something like that. Um, I didn't really have the gear and equipment to be comfortable and safe out there. More than covered these days in terms of gear and being able to have these extra luxuries is a really nice change of pace. So I tried to get the projector set up, but it turns out you can't use AirPlay from your phone unless you have a network, and I'm in the middle of the woods without any internet, and I don't have a Starlink or anything. I really thought it could spoof a network for me to connect to, but it turns out you can't. 
Uh, so no projector for tonight, unfortunately. Read my book for a while, sipped my tea, enjoyed my heater here that's still going. We've almost tapped out the supplementary battery, but the main unit is still pretty much full charge at this point. Definitely crazy, not the most efficient use of electricity running an electric space heater here but it's working really well. It's been kind of a fun experiment. So it definitely makes sense in other camping scenarios, potentially a little bit more than this silly little test here. You know, if you wanna be able to charge an e-bike or run a CPAP machine, or if you do wanna bring a Starlink system and have internet set up, or you know, if you have an electric fridge that you wanna be running. Uh, tons of other alternatives that are outside of my current gear for camping, but this was a fun experiment with some things I have and some things that I could use. So right now I'm just charging up my batteries and devices, watching some TV and getting settled in for bed. I think I'm probably gonna sign off for now until morning. Hopefully we can get some good filming in the morning, but depending on how heavy the rain is, I might not be able to bring the camera out much. Having all this extra power and the extra luxuries though has been a ton of fun. Uh, with that in mind though, signing off for the night. I'll talk to you all soon. Sleeping in pretty late, it's almost eight o'clock, which is pretty late for me. Got the heater kicked back on, the battery is still going. Not sure if I'm gonna stick around for breakfast still, just with this rain, I'm sure you can hear it in the mic. It was raining even heavier earlier, a few hours ago, but still coming down pretty good. I don't know if I really wanna hang out in it, so we might skip breakfast, but I'm at least gonna make some coffee, especially because I can make it, you know, all cozied up inside the tent here. Apologies for the tortoise pace in my speaking. I just woke up. I didn't realize how much slower I talk when I wake up in the morning. I don't normally film right away when I'm getting out of bed. Luckily though, with the exception of a few hiccups and running out of time to build a fire, the trip was a success. It was a really fun experiment trying to get this thing down and completely drained in an overnight trip. I ended up completely draining the BP2000 expansion battery and ending up with 36% in the main F2000 unit. All in all, not bad considering I ran electric space heater at 500 watts for pretty much the entire night. I had a 1200 watt hot plate. You know, I had around a thousand watt kettle that I was using. I charged up all my devices when I was there. I was using the built-in ambient light to get some extra light in addition to the plugged in lighting. Going all out and completely crazy with the electricity use, I still wasn't able to drain this thing fully, but it was just wild to be able to plug in so many devices all at once and not have to worry about it tripping running into issues, being able to stay warm and dry at camp. I did end up sticking around for a few minutes to cook some breakfast after I packed up. I set up that tarp shelter the night before, so I had a little area that was dry from the heavier rain, but I just didn't want to risk ruining the camera, especially I just upgraded my camera and I'm still kind of in that babying it stage for now. But this thing really performed like a champ. I did a video a couple months ago with a more straightforward type of review and overview. So if you did want to see more straightforward details, aside from our little experiment here. I'll be sure to link that video as well. I did want to talk about a few other points though. Getting this thing recharged after a trip is also incredibly easy and fast. With AC power, you can charge it up to 1440 watts. That'll get you back to 80% in one hour. You can also charge a thousand watts with solar if you have the full array of solar panels. It was also so nice to be able to use the smart app when I was out on the trip to be able to monitor the energy usage of this. I can turn and toggle on and off the light here you know, when it's cold and you're cozied up in your sleeping bag, you don't really want to get up to check the screen. You know, the screen's really nice on here, but being able to control everything from your phone is also a really great touch. I'd planned to focus entirely on the camping trip for this video, but I did have a bit of an interesting side tangent I wanted to cover. If you all remember when I made my jacket video last month, uh, we had some pretty crazy storms here. We lost power for a couple of days, so I was able to use this and still get all of my work done. I plugged in my entire desk and got to work like any other day. Uh, really, really nice for those types of situations aside from the camping ones, but it definitely shines in a fun way 
for, you know, outdoor adventures and things like that. And I'm sure if you had an RV, you would be even better. The F2000 uses lithium ion phosphate batteries, which are generally considered the best option around. They're EV grade batteries, so they have a little bit better charge efficiency and a longer lifespan. It's rated for 3000 charge cycles as a five year warranty as well, which is really great to see. Anchor has always been known for their quality and dependability in this space. It continues to impress for me performing exactly as intended perfectly every time for the past six months. They're running some really good promotions right now for the Valentine's Day sale. You can get the F2000 for $1399, so $600 off right now. So be sure to check the link in the description down below. Thank you all so much for watching this little bit of a different video. I'm a bit rusty filming outside of the studio, but I really hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you all again though, and I'll talk to you in the next one.